Welcome one and all from across our synod and across the church as we gather for this Christmas service of Lessons and Carols. A service for our synod and by our synod. Gifts generously shared uh, through many hearts, through many spirits, that we might be joined together as the body of Christ during these holy days. Today we're especially grateful for all of those who are participating, but particularly thankful for the people of Breath of God in Highland Town who are hosting us uh, in their beautiful sanctuary. And I'm thankful for my colleague, Deacon Julie Stecker, who has coordinated the service and the participation of many. As we gather around word and song, I am also reminded of your generosity and grateful for all the ways that you share time, talent, and treasure, for the love of God and neighbor, in support of our local church ministries and the larger life of this church together. I invite you, as we come to the end of this fiscal year, to join in making a gift to support the ministries that we share, new and revitalizing congregations, our outdoor ministry at Marble Ridge, Lutheran Campus Ministry, St. Dismas in the Prisons, and our seminary. Please go to our website and consider how you might do that today. Personally, I'd simply like to say Merry Christmas to you and yours, and wish you the richest blessings for this new year. Beloved, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad.
We gather this day as we live each of our days in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together in joyful song. grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God of heaven and earth, you have brought love to life in the world through Jesus. 
The born in a manger, Jesus is the firstborn of all creation. Though crucified on a cross, Jesus is the Lord of life. Fill us with the wonder and joy of his presence in the world and in our hearts. Amen. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Storytime brought to you by the E-Team. Today, we will be reading The Light of Christmas, a pop-up book written by Kat Hollier. Mary was a loving soul, so sweet and kind in every way, and she always did her best to live God's teaching every day. Then one night she met an angel by the name of Gabriel. He said to her, you'll have a baby. He'll be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel, but isn't his name Jesus? Well, Emmanuel means God with us, so it's basically another way of talking about Jesus, because Jesus can have many names. Mary and her husband, Joseph, left to go to Bethlehem. Though they had to travel far, nothing could discourage them. As their donkey neared the town, they felt a sense of hope within. But when they arrived, they found that there was no room in the inn. Wait, no rooms? I understand, why didn't they just call ahead for reservations? Like whenever I go to a hotel, like I just reserve a room. Well, this story takes place a really long time ago, and they couldn't just call and make a reservation. And a very important event was happening at the town, so a lot of people were visiting. Oh. So the two found humble shelter next to cows and horses, too. Sure, it wasn't somewhere fancy, but the Lord would see them through. There, among the hay-filled manger, baby Jesus Christ was born, filling all with love and light beneath the stars of early morn. Aren't castles where kings are born? Well, Jesus was a special type of king. People weren't really aware who he was going to be when he was born, so he wasn't in a castle. Angels of the Lord appeared to shepherds who were standing near, bringing tidings of great joy to tell them that their Lord was here. Quickly as can be, they traveled to the baby's manger bed. On the way, they told their friends so the good news would quickly spread. Wait, how did they share the news? Did they text? Well, no, they didn't really have cell phones, so they couldn't create a bomb group text. They actually just had to spread news by word of mouth. Suddenly, a brand new star was twinkling in the winter sky. In the east, there were three wise men who saw the star and wondered why. It's a sign. Our king is here, a brand new beauty to behold. So they went to bring him gifts of frankincense and myrrh and gold. Whoa, whoa, whoa wait. Why would they bring him Frankenstein? Well, they actually didn't bring him Frankenstein. They brought him frankincense, which is a really good smelling spice. The world rejoiced the birth of Jesus so that day so long ago. All were filled with joy and wonder for the child they treasured so. They knew that he would change the world. His love would light the way. And that is why we celebrate this special time called Christmas Day. The end. Thank you for listening to our story. Thank you. Thank you. Merry uh, Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Our Savior has been born. This is truly a holy night of miracles.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. The Word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, in choosing the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, you made known your gracious regard for the poor and lowly. Grant us grace to receive your word in humility and so to be made one with your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ our God to earth descendeth, our full homage to i 
as the darkness clears Feed the six winged seraph, cherub and with sleepless eyes, veil their faces to his presence as with ceaseless voice they. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, who from the family of your servant David raised up Joseph to be the guardian of your incarnate son and the spouse of his virgin mother, give us grace to imitate his uprightness of life and his obedience to your commands. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger 
because there was no place for them in the inn. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made yourself known in your Son, Jesus, Redeemer of the world. We pray that his birth as a human child will set us free from the old slavery of our sin. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? This, this is Christ the King whom shepherds guard and to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate, where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian fear, for sinners hear the silent word is pleased. Spear shall pierce him through, the cross be borne for me, for you. Hail, hail the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant. King to own him, the King of Kings, salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. Raise, raise the song on high. The Virgin sings a lullaby. Joy, joy for Christ. Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there is an angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those who, whom he favors, and the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity. Your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, and what was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the world became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. All powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into the world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Beloved, all grace, mercy, and peace be yours and mine from God and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. These words from O Little Town of Bethlehem have been a breath prayer for me in these last days running up to our Christmas observances in 2020. Hope and fear. Our hopes and fears. These are met at the manger. They intersect at the cross. In these beautiful scriptures that we've heard today, the eternal hope and yearning of the human race grows and takes hold of life in the magnificent darkness and comes forth into the light of a new day in the birth of this child, both humble and divine. By sin, we have burdened his shoulders with every earthly failing and divine hope. For warmth in the cold, food for the, our hunger, righteousness in place of injustice, an end to violence and war and a lasting and eternal peace. Those yearnings continue to burst forth in human hearts and we live in hope that Christ's reign will ultimately bring them to reality. Even as we gather to celebrate the holy birth, we look to recover our faith in that eternal hope. Recently, I met a sibling who I knew that I knew from somewhere before. As we talked, we made the connection that they had lived on the steps of a church that I knew well and loved dearly. They remembered me from some small kind interactions that we had on those steps well over a year before. They told the story of a job suddenly lost, a relationship that came apart, of mental health that overwhelmed, of being thrown out of the place where they were living through no fault of their own. They said it had been the second time they had become homeless. The first time they had been put out into the darkness of a snowy night with no money and only the clothing on their back. On that occasion, a community agency helped them to find a bed for a time. But the second ousting from that temporary home was more painful and access to help was greatly diminished because of budget cuts and new legislation to clean up the streets of a government complicit to advance a fierce exercise of eminent domain in proxy for a big institutional land holding company. As I listened to the story, I realized Jesus was born for this. For these unhoused siblings in the cold and hungry gloom of rejection and our complicity with, albeit altruistic, nevertheless, institutional violence. Jesus is born for this, born anew in human hearts every time we meet the vulnerable, which, if we're honest, 
is all of us. Especially when we awaken to the realities of our own longings. And if we're being really honest, is so often the nameless, faceless neighbor who is the casual side effect of that which is done with our money and in our name. We're all filled with the same yearnings for an enduring home and healing in a community of peace. Particularly in the season of pandemic want and uncertainty, as the nation experiences a bumpy transition of power. We too look for stability, confidence, and faith in something beyond our own sufficiency. That God might cast off divine glory and be vulnerable enough to take on human flesh seems beyond the imagination of many, including those of us who know this story so well. Yet it's that very vulnerability that offers hope. Especially when we know our own needs and hungers and yearnings. Saint Irenaeus says it this way, the frail infant Jesus is clothed with divine glory, the lowly lifted up and the hungering hopeful by the promise of that Bethlehem birth. Over all of this drama of divine entry into human flesh hovers a community not unlike this one. Angels draw our attention to the holy in our midst. Parents, elders, and teachers steward our growing wisdom and awareness and guide us into growth toward the full stature of Christ. The glory of God in human being fully alive. Shepherds keep watch. Lest danger come to the vulnerable. A few weeks ago, as I encountered that newly housed sibling, whom I had known from the steps of the church some time ago, I heard again the story, their story of other unhoused angels guiding the night, watch, the night watching shepherds to their side and leading them to shelter in a community that your mission support makes possible. The elders of those streets guided them into the heart of a welcoming community, even when the community who stewarded those first steps on which they laid couldn't imagine doing anything more. My sibling might not have had the traveling companions of the babe born in Bethlehem, but they did have a surrounding community of care and help bringing that babe close as the hopes and fears of many years were met for them. Beloved, each one of us comes to the stable hoping to meet the holy, and we do. We meet that holy child in every vulnerable human being, in everyone who hungers and thirsts. We meet the Christ growing to maturity in all who answer their neighbor's vulnerability and need. Jesus is present with us at his table, but at every table too, and meeting where those needs meet response. Salvation rises up all around us. As we've listened to the beautiful story of Christmas told again in scripture and song, the question that I would leave for us to carry is simply this. Where is the holy child born again this day? The 
the challenge I would leave before us. Who gathers to watch over, nurture, and guard the growing Redeemer that is in our midst? You do. And I see you. In tested faith, with generous hearts, with fears that are met with hope, we live out the Christmas story anew. Indeed, hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee, O Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, our pastors, 
deacons, lay staff, and disciples across this church and synod. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O oh God. All creation is holy to you, O oh God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that wait earnestly for longer days of awakening and growth. Hear us, O oh God. The nations are upheld by your hand, O oh God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O oh God. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O oh God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, hearts that long for wholeness, especially those dear to us, and those we remember aloud, in silence and on social media using the hashtag Delaware Maryland Praise. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O oh God. As you claimed us in baptism, O oh God, bless us with peace and joy. Strengthen those who are on the front lines of the COVID pandemic. Be with those who are experiencing illness and those whose energy is taxed caring for the sick. Help us to accompany those whose learning and livelihood has been challenged by these circumstances. Remind us often to consider what it means to love our neighbor as ourselves. Make us generous in sharing with those who are in need of sustainable income, food, company, or health care. Connect us across the church and world. Hear us, O oh God. Let us depart in peace, O oh God, according to your word. For all your saints who have gone before us, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses of every time and place. Hear us, O oh God. Come quickly to us, we pray with grace upon grace, as we lift these in all our prayers to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as we've been taught to ask, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, may you know again the joy of the angels, the hopefulness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the Magi, the faithfulness of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child this Christmas. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit abide in you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus.